Now, everybody has a different story when it comes to building a business. To some, it's never an easy task to partake. And to some, they have very good stories of how they started from scratch and built their empires to profitability. And that's the reason why Bizna Kenya and MC Moments have partnered to bring you Biz Talks. Biz Talks. And here we shall be hosting mentors, people who have gone ahead of us, people who have created these empires, people who have also on the verge of creating these particular big businesses. And these lessons will be valuable for you, the business person, for you, the aspiring business person, the entrepreneur, so that at least you can make wise decisions when it comes to building that business. So every Friday at 8 a.m. on all business platforms, that's the Facebook and YouTube channel, and of course, MC Moments. All right, good morning and welcome to Biz Talks. I hope you're keeping well from wherever you are. It's quite cold and chilly here, but of course we keep moving on because business does not respect temperatures and seasons. Somebody was saying we're still in the Kenyan winter. I don't know whether that's what you're experiencing wherever you are now. I just want to welcome you to our amazing conversation. Today we have a very interesting, what I call, uh, I don't use the word strange, I would call unique businesses because we're talking about Matas Immigration Consulting. I know you're wondering what about immigration, all those kind of things, but our guest is right here. He came right on time for us to really understand and get to know what is this all about? How does it probably affect you? You never know. You could one day expand your business and you need to be going around this continent, around the world as well, because we all have dreams and aspirations. But first is to welcome you and tell you, if you're there, please tell a friend to tell a friend that Bistox is on and it's live and kicking. And secondly, is to welcome our guest in our usual way. Karibu sana, George. Asante. Thank you. Thank you, Maina. It's good to see you. My pleasure all the time. As usual, we have our very nice set courtesy of Melvin's Mash. And uh, I, I know I told you to peep and uh, make a selection. What did you choose? What are you going to have? I, I love Melvin's um, masala tea. Masala? Yeah. So you're, not, you're an oldie, like yeah. me as a boy, yeah, eh? for sure, So yeah. I ask you to pick one there. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, start. Are you going to have it with water or milk? Uh, milk. So sure, it's milk. milk eh? Yeah. So we do a mix, eh? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Chai. Eh, yeah, chai. <laughs> chai of quelli. Eh, Melvins. You know, when I said uh, we're gonna have uh, immigration consulting, yeah. A friend told me. Yeah. Can you first of all ask him about what happened to Ruto? <laughs> <laughs> because Ruto uh -huh. did not go where you were supposed to go. That, okay, for anyone who's watching, Ruto is a deputy president. But anyway, some, some news, he was denied uh, some entries to some country. I don't know what happened. Was it political or was it immigration policies or what was it? I don't know. George will tell us. George. I don't, uh, know, I don't know how, I know I shouldn't, it's all stuck with questions, but... I, I think I have, I, like I posted, in, you know, in my social media. Some sugar? Oh, you okay? Um, one or two. Oh, one or two. I, I did say that the issue of the deputy president is yeah. above my pay grade. <laughs> So <laughs> I wasn't going to comment. Um, <laughs> it's about your pay grade. It's about my pay grade because right. I mean, uh, the Jub Jubilee Secretary General once yeah. said yeah. the matter was above his pay grade. Yes, and my pay grade is lower than two G. So I, I want to avoid. But I, I don't think he's immigration related. Okay. He's the shenanigans of politics. Politics. So, right. so we let them. <laughs> let the politics be. Yeah. Let me first of all make my choice. I'm so I'm so getting used to uh, the hibiscus. Because one, let me introduce you to it. Okay. You don't need sugar. Oh, wow. It has its own flavors yeah. and all that. And it's well, just beautiful as it is. Wow. It makes your cup look red. <laughs> wow. I, I love sugar. No, no, I'll give you, I'll give you something to go and try at home. We have um, an agreement with sugar that they don't do immigration. <laughs> and I don't attack sugar. I keep taking sugar. You keep taking sugar. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. All right. Excellent. It's good to have you on the show. Just want to remind our viewers that we're talking about immigration consulting. George is the expert in that field. Uh, I've known George for quite some time, but we're going to do to understand what is this that he does. He was telling me that even his mother sometimes finds it hard to understand what he does. So George, once again, uh, even as you have your tea, yeah. first of all, let's start with just you. Who is George? And, you know, what is this immigration monster? <laughs> Uh, my name is George Muse. Uh, yeah. People struggle with Muse, but I keep saying he's yes. uh, Muse, Muse. People call it, but but you know in 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 Swahili they ask you unaito aje. It's yeah. not unajita aje. Mm -hmm. So whichever way you call me, that's I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm very many things to many people, but first um, I'm a father. Yeah, 
of four four children. Wow. And a husband of one wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and 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 a business person, an ordinary guy that has a vision yes. in life, and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, the things that the world can be better if everybody does their part. Yeah. So that's that's me in a nutshell. I think we will speak more. We'll about speak it more about that. Is yeah. it? So let me ask you. Definitely, now you're in the consulting business. Yeah. For me, I, I from where I sit, because as I said, but I want our viewers as well to understand you. Yeah. You transitioned definitely. Yeah. So, what was your journey? Could you just take us through your journey into understanding this whole thing of immigration to now where you are? Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, Maina. As you did say, we we are all this. We've been here for a while. Yeah. Um, when I cleared my university, my first degree in two thousand and two mm -hmm. um, from Moi University, I went to Mombasa. You know, yeah. those of us who come from the village, yeah. you only get to go to town if you knew somebody. And my brother was staying in Mombasa, so yes. I took the, the trip from Eldoret to Mombasa, yeah. and I started what people are calling hustling nowadays, mm -hmm. doing a few other things. Yeah. And I remember the first time I encountered anything about immigration is somebody saying, oh, you know, there are jobs in Tanzania. You, yeah. you can get a passport and go. Mm -hmm. It was intriguing. So I'm like, oh, so where do we start? Then I, that's when I learned there's something like immigration. Yeah. But then around 2004, mm -hmm. there was an advertisement for immigration officers too. Mm -hmm. And I remember people saying, why don't you just so, apply? So the guys in your house or Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. So people said, "Why don't you apply?" Yeah. And I applied because that time getting a job was was difficult. But then, uh, you know, when I came in the yeah. Kibaki government, there mm -hmm. was a shift in public service hiring. Yes. So I applied, mm -hmm. and uh, and went on with my life. But then I saw we were shortlisted, ten thousand of us <laughs> for two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. Mm -hmm. But eventually, I, I got the job. Yeah. As an immigration officer too. And that's when I go to know what immigration is all about. Lovely. So I worked with the Department of Immigration for several years mm -hmm. in different stations. Yeah. Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the, the border with Kenya yeah. and Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Then I came to Wilson Airport, then Nyaya House. I <laughs> stayed there for some time. Yeah. Then I was posted yes. on secondment to the UN mission in Liberia mm -hmm. to, as part of the you know other immigration experts from across Africa yeah. to help yeah. rebuild the Liberia Immigration Service. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we did that in 2012, 2013. Yeah. Then I came back and my mind opened and I figured, um, well, I love public service, but the money is really not coming through. Yeah. So I thought I could look for opportunities. So in 2014, I got an opportunity with an amazing American firm, Fragomen, yeah. mm -hmm. where I was the head of... Uh, Fragomen. Fragomen. Yeah. I was the head of their business in East Africa for seven years. Seven years. Yeah, but I went to law school, mm -hmm. uh, University of Nairobi, so I cleared my bachelor's of law. Yeah. And then I have to go to Kenya School of Law. I'm at the Kenya School of Law at the moment so yeah. that I can be admitted. And it's very laborious. So I took the shift from employment yeah. to focus on Kenya School of Law, but also to you know start my own thing. Mm -hmm. So that is how the transitioning. But I, I, the business of immigration consulting was by chance. I, I didn't know what immigration is all about. I wanted yeah. to be... A lawyer initially, mm -hmm. uh, which you're about to become. Yes, fully, yes. <laughs> Apparently, all the things I've wanted to become, I've become. I be <laughs> and I'm literally starting to think I can become the president. So let's pray. Hey, um, I, I'm so glad that I'm already hosting you. <laughs> However, me when you get there. On more serious matters, <laughs> I think I wanted to be a lawyer, which I that time because of the card point we didn't yeah. get. Mm -hmm. But I really wanted to be a literally critic because I used to listen to some gentlemen, yeah. Professor Igara Kabaji and Barack Muruka. Yeah. I've never met them in person, yeah. but I used to listen to them in, a, in, in KBC. Uh -huh. They used to host some programs, books and bookmen and yeah. something. Yeah. And uh, I became, because mm -hmm. I was admitted to study mm -hmm. BA in literature in Moi University, and I became the literary mm -hmm. critic. Yeah. Now I've gone back to do law, yeah. so I am in the, in, on the verge of being an advocate. Okay. And now I'm an immigration is what is by chance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. I think that's a very good journey because I think uh, at some point it's good to just tell our viewers. We, we shared a class, but for you, I think uh, you have not stopped learning. You keep going on. 
I'm about where I am right now. We will converse later, but at least you're here. You can see the yeah, I think for purposes of disclosure, Maina and I yes. <laughs> are geezers in this industry. We were in school together uh, and, 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 and learned a lot of things together. Great. So, um, first of all, I just, just a shout out to our viewers. Thank you so much. Please let us know where you're watching us from. I just want to give a shout out to you. Antonio Biamch is already been sending a question. I know he wants to go to Canada. I think you'll be advising people how this is done, maybe easy and all those kind of things. Because I see a lot of websites and people say, oh, uh, I don't know, this is the place to immigrate to and those kind of things. But we'll we will have that conversation yeah. today. Uh, but especially for you, the business person, if you're looking at expanding, what do you do? Um, so keep them coming if you have any questions that you have. So an immigration consultant, can I ask you a question? What inspired you to now jump into that? Because of course you've given us a journey, yeah. but I want to believe, in fact, I should ask the question. Are you enjoying what you're doing? Uh, I think I am. Uh, Great. <laughs> in the last 17 years I've been working. Yeah. And, and when you're working, when you're doing something and you it's part of your life you don't realize yeah. what is on the other side. Yeah. But after I, I, you know, exited employment, I feel so free. Free in the sense that nobody is asking me about the bottom line. Yeah. The bottom line is my bottom line. Yeah. Uh, if today my bottom line is to sleep, I sleep. But uh, what I'm, I'm, my thinking is around what inspired me to this is, yeah. you know, I realize people kept coming to me. Mm -hmm. People that are very urbanite, yeah. but every time they have to mm -hmm. do a basic thing like renew a passport, yeah. they have to call me, oh, George, I need to renew my passport. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, go ahead and renew. I'm like, they're like, but what do I need? Yeah. So we have to go through, through that process. So I, I realize it's very basic, mm -hmm. but then people don't get the information. Okay. Uh, government uh, institutions, because of the challenges they are financing and so forth, are not very good at providing, you know, very clear information. Mm -hmm. And then there are foreigners that want to come here to invest, to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. They have no information. I, where to start from. And I remember uh, Adesta again, yes. Dr. Wandi Anjoya's class, yes. and she invited the, the Blogger Association of Kenya. Yeah. Uh, and, and I got into blogging by chance, but I figured I can do my own blogging. Mm -hmm. So that's how Kenya Immigration News was born. Yeah. Uh, and I kept writing just the how to do the basic things and there was a lot of interest and even business yeah so i realized uh, people are looking for business credible business uh, right. credible information mm. if you can avail that information they are willing to pay for it go for so, it so so that and then when i joined the fragomen mm -hmm. you realize now these are serious fellows in terms of the business of immigration, of immigration. they are in it for the big money yeah so i figured all oh, what we've been doing for free mm -hmm. as charity yeah as pub public service is actually a big business okay so i'm going to ask you a basic question which yeah. already you've already touched on yeah i've had you mentioned governments how you're helping guys who want to set up business and all those kind of things but someone may still ask someone who may have tuned in right now so what is immigration consulting in the simplest language that people can We are going to, let's add a little bit uh, uh, further yeah. to bring them closer home. That's okay. What is a state? What is a country? Yeah. There are four parameters. Mm -hmm. Number one, you need to have a defined geography, geographical Definitely. area. You know the map of Kenya? Yes. That's our geography. Wait, that's a geography map. You need to have a permanent population. Yeah. Because like, as a country, you need to have your population. So I, can't, I can't leave this slide away. I know, I know this is a very serious conversation, yeah. but when... Um, the gold medal was taken to Uganda. Somebody said, this is still Kenya. <laughs> but go ahead, anyway. <laughs> so you, the two parameters, the yes. geography, yes. the population, permanent population. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is you need to have a government. Yeah. You know the state. Yeah. Uh, the president is there and the government. Definitely. And you need to have the capacity, what they call sovereignty, to yeah. transact with other people as equal partners, what they call yeah. the equality of state. Yes. And our immigration comes in on the aspect of the geography mm -hmm. and the population. Mm -hmm. You need to know, while the military will take care of the aggressors, yes. is the immigration that allows people to come in, to go out, to go and out. even to reside. Okay. That's what immigration is. Okay. So immigration is an exercise yeah. of a country mm -hmm. asserting its sovereignty, mm -hmm. who is within our borders and who comes and goes. Yeah. Now that process of Facilitating people mm -hmm. into and out of a country is mm -hmm. what constitutes immigration. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what is immigration consulting? Mm -hmm. In fact, we have not defined immigration. Mm -hmm. What is consulting? Mm -hmm. Basic English. 
Yeah. If I want something that I think or information on a matter that, like communication or what you do, mm -hmm. I come and say, Maina, tell me about this. I am consulting That's the process true. of asking okay. for information. So immigration consulting is providing advisory and services to people that are in need of immigration related services. Makes sense. In very simplistic. Uh, Fair enough. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because let, let me just speak on my own experience. I think we had this time of the Huduma. <laughs> Guys. Yes, yes. I hope people help them. <laughs> yeah, do, yes. I've not received mine yet. I applied. But now, that whole process, and you saw it at your house, people queuing, I don't know for how many days, people having to cancel their appointments wherever they were going. Yeah. Anytime you hear you have to go to your house, you have to go for some... Uh, for some Melvin's tea, <laughs> relax, and then just wake up some, some hours. Yeah. And if it was taught... Let me use the word torture. It was yes, torturous yes, in a way. Yeah. So are you saying this, George, from my own basic understanding from what you've said, because yeah. you're helping people, yeah. um, that if, if, for example, right now I need some, you know, some of those services, yeah. that I can come through your consulting firm and those things will be sorted? We can. I can, and I'll tell you the range of services that we do. Yeah. Immigration is actually like 80% clerical yeah. and like 20% substance in terms of the law and the police and everything. Yeah. What troubles most of the people is the clerical, you yeah. know, the, the tactical part of it. And I'm not saying clerical to diminish, to show that it's more about the documentation. Yes. The way and how to go. Uh -huh. But uh, yes, uh, passport is one of them, yeah. but it's not, it's not a business that I, passport is not really a big business. It's not a big business. Because what we do is providing very basic support because yeah. we think we come from the point of view that a passport is a document that every Kenyan should have. Mm -hmm. So the, gov the immigration department is streamlining that approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but there is a range of other services, mostly is business consulting. Mm -hmm. um, companies that want to set up here mm -hmm. or people that have complicated processes like citizenship and yeah. permanent residence and, and, and whatnot. Yeah. We also do policy, mm -hmm. actual policy. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, there are agencies that want to do an immigration related policy. Mm -hmm. There are government that would like to review their policy on immigration. Yeah. Those are the kind of things that we are looking into. Mm -hmm. But if you come to me man, and say, oh, I need my passport, I'm being, I will support you whichever way I can. Yeah. And by the way, uh, you know, for clarity, Kenya, there is no international passport or local passport. I keep telling people, people call me that I want international passport. Yeah. A passport is by its very nature for the purpose of traveling outside the country. There's no local passport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they mistake it with diplomatic ones. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So let's talk about your scope because now you've already said what you do at yeah. your firm. Let's talk about the scope and in terms of have you helped people to migrate to other countries, stuff like that. And if there was maybe a comment, how, how many countries have you had a touch and send people there, you know, just for the basic understanding. I think I think the kind of a um, again the immigration consulting field is like a forest. Yeah, it has space for the elephants and it has you know space for the for, for a rat and for everybody. Yeah, I think what I've been involved a lot in is the corporate business immigration uh, companies. Yeah, companies tell me. We hire expatriates who would like you to handle our processes mm -hmm. and to advise us on compliance. Mm -hmm. But I have also come across a few cases of mm -hmm. Kenyans that want to go to other countries. Yes. I do not, as a matter of fact, place people in other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, that is done by a few other agencies. Mm -hmm. But I can, if someone wants to go to a country, yeah. uh, I can, you know, within my network and our networks, uh -huh help them understand that process yeah. and link them up with a professional. Like say for Canada, because I get a lot of inquiries for Canada. Yeah. yeah. I, I, have, I already, somebody already yes. asked that question. I, yeah. I have, and there is a lot of fake news around Canada wanting 10,000 or what number of people. Yeah. You should always treat that with caution. Mm -hmm. Because there are no countries that are inviting people to rush into their countries. Very true. Um, but the kind of, of advice I give to people is, have you gotten a job or an yeah. opportunity for the country you want to go into? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what you need to do is, mm -hmm. then we can link you up with professionals, yes. legal agents that are authorized to practice in Canada because can, like Canadian immigration, you yeah. need to be authorized to practice Canadian immigration. Oh. Someone who can guide you through the process. Okay. But I do not 
pick people say I want to go to this country mm. then take them and place them I don't do that yeah I'm so much more into the policy and into the business corporate immigration yeah with companies okay to help their their workforce lovely mm. so this field is I don't know whether to call it new or wide or what but maybe how, how many immigration consultants do we have around I, I, like I said, it's a forest. It has very many people. Okay. I'll tell you something. When I yeah. joined the immigration department in 2005, 16 years ago, mm -hmm. we found people uh, that were always around immigration offices trying to do one, two, three things for people, and yeah. we used to call them brokers. Yeah. I have since realized those people are actually immigration consultants. Oh. <laughs> yeah? Yes. And I have a lot of regards for them because any Kenyan that is out here doing something that is legal mm -hmm. to earn a shilling to cater for their family, for me, they need to be appreciated. Absolutely. So there are those people and they are the majority. They don't have an office. They don't. Yeah. They, are, they just wake up in the morning, go outside immigration offices uh -huh. Uh -huh. to see somebody they can help. If you walk to Nyaya today, they are going to say, passport, you want this? Yeah. Those are also consulted, <laughs> in, consulted their own right, right. in their own right. And there are the big <laughs> companies, not like, uh, you know, the big companies that we've worked for before. Mm -hmm. They need for the big money the, because of the brand that they get, you know. But there are other small ones that are also setting up offices and yeah. former immigration officers. So it's a field that is very broad, but very few actors. Yeah. You can't even know there's no record. It's, it's free entry, free exit, no regulations, no nothing, which we will discuss later the challenge. Okay. But we can't have, we don't have the numbers, but mm -hmm. there are quite a few of mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. that are doing this. It yeah. could be law firms, accounting firms, consultants mm -hmm. like myself, yeah. individuals, those Kenyans that have been in Nyaya as long before I was born, yeah, you know, trying definitely. to help. All these people. They have been there. And by the way, I insist. For me, I have a lot of regards for those people. Yeah. And those are the people we that are now speaking good English, not so good English on yeah. TV and yes. big office and suit, <laughs> need to look up to them and find out mm -hmm. what can we do together? Yeah. What value can be added? Don't look down upon them. I really have a lot of regards for anybody. Okay. Okay. That without being caught in the shenanigans of politics, anyone yes. who has a hustle, they want yeah. to get into and earn yeah. a decent level. And of course, here at BizTalks, we appreciate anybody, your hustle, everything we're talking about, because we always say SMEs are at our heart, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to ask you this question, and you know, I'm just picking it randomly, and I want you, because now you're in the field, yeah. you know, we see a lot of from where I see, we see a lot of complaints. We have engineers, local engineers who are complaining big time, big contracts are going to foreigners. I mean, that is now tier one. Yeah. But even small things, and I've had even sometimes the CS interior, Matiangi yeah. mentioned it. Yeah. Now, there's a time we're so vocal saying we can't have, I don't know, a landscaper coming from I don't know where. Mm. Small, small jobs that really uh, can be taken up locally. Yeah. Um, so we have had that scenario one. Scenario yeah. two is in other countries, for example, in fact, it's a practical thing. Go try setting up a business in one of our East African countries. I don't want to mention them. There's yeah. one that is too difficult. Yeah. I think the CS, the CS taking all the money. So my question to you is this, George, is it that what is our landscape in terms of our laws? Is it our, now that you're even a lawyer, you know, uh, is it that our laws are too easy and flexible and all that. The other day I saw the president go and tell, I think it's Congolese and all, you're free to come to Kenya and do business. But the vice versa is not yet jumping in. What is it? Is it that, what are we? Where are we? <laughs> no, I think the, the Kenyan laws are very good, very decent, very, very modern. Yeah. Um, we, we need to debunk this myth that there are so many foreigners in Kenya. It's not true. It is not true. Oh. Um, when, when a few years back, the Minister of Interior conducted an exercise to, to, to see who is in the country, yeah. there was probably people on regular permit that have been issued by the government of Kenya, mm -hmm. give and take maximum 100,000. Yeah. What is the percentage of 50 million? Mm. It's negligible. Negligible, definitely. On the reverse, go yeah. to Dubai, mm -hmm. go to China, go to London, go to New York, go to wherever. You find very many Kenyans. Yeah. I find Kenyans hustling in those streets and I'm like, <laughs> man, you're doing good. I mean, Kenyans are even so in IT. But let on. us not <laughs> uh, be too narrow in our thinking. Okay. I appreciate and I don't believe that where there's a job that a Kenyan can do, you should be denied the Kenyan and, and given to a foreigner. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So we need to be 
careful on that. But the people that is the problem that we complain a lot about are actually the people that are in Kenya illegally. They are here. They just slither into our borders and do whatever they want to do. Okay. But I don't think, in terms of the ratio, mm -hmm. Kenya is not. We don't have so many expatriates working here. Yeah. Secondly, if you look at countries like Dubai, mm -hmm. they are up to eighty percent mm -hmm. expatriates. Mm -hmm. Are they weaker? <laughs> look at the U.S. Yeah. You know the percentage of uh, foreigners, you know, in the U.S. It's about forty million. It's like a whole country. Whoa. Yeah, mm -hmm. in a strong country. Yes, and I think there's a Swahili singer that say uh, that mtu wenye ukona mwenye ukona matunda duna una poor amawe. People go to a place that is is better for them. Yeah. So we should be proud that Kenya people mm -hmm. are coming to Kenya as Very as true. as expatriate. Very true. But all the same, there there has to be mm -hmm. a balance. Yeah. We don't want to see people. Mm -hmm. Um, doing, you know, some kind of business and denying Kenyans those opportunities. It's a delicate balance. Mm -hmm. And again, people ask the reciprocity. Yeah. And the president is always right because he's going to invite people to come to Kenya. You know why? Because the president is forward thinking. He's mm -hmm. looking at, mm -hmm. if you're coming to invest in Kenya, you're setting up an industry. You can bring 10 expatriates, but you're, you're employing a thousand Kenyans. Oh, yeah, you're you're right. paying taxes in Kenya. Okay. You're doing all those. In fact, I am for the view, let's make Kenya a country for nomads, mm -hmm. people that can come, we give them a visa, stay in Kenya for a year, stay in Kempinski, stay in an apartment, yeah. do your work remotely, whatever you want to do, but you are paying our taxes, you are going out with our people, mm -hmm. you are taking our food, you are taking our cabs, you bring money to the economy. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. We need to be very creative with our immigration, mm -hmm. but let us be strict. If you're in Kenya, we know you're here. And yeah. what are you coming to do? Yeah. The problem is the enforcement, the weakness in enforcement, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the Department of Immigration, and they really work hard. Mm -hmm. You know, they have many challenges, and, and they face the resourcing yeah. and so forth, and, mm -hmm. and interferences. Yeah. But they try. They are very small in number. Yeah. If you compare that with, uh, say, Tanzania. Tanzania, immigration is a force mm -hmm. you would find probably up to ten thousand officers so you'll find them in every city in every town Whoa. they know you're here <laughs> in kenya immigration is the latest mm. you know mm. there are not more than two thousand officers and if they are not more than three thousand and they see people get harassed and they sit in offices in your house the greatest number would be at jomo kenyatta maybe a hundred and something yeah then Nyaya House and all the region of so there is no one at the border, no one is watching our borders, our towns. Like I would imagine now we need to have an immigration office mm. in every county. You're right. Yeah. You're it's right. not devolved function, but we need to have immigration office in every Absolutely. county. Absolutely. Yeah. Because we need to enforce. Mm. We don't have an issue. Come, but mm. tell us who you are, mm. what you are doing, yeah. what is your details, where are you staying? Yeah. Yeah. And be a lawful citizen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Certainly a lot to be done. So it can also create jobs, you know, yeah. because there will be more people. Yeah. Thanks, Baliti Munyoki, um, Josiah Musili. I'm following for consultancy, absolutely. And That's think, my uh, boss. Yeah, uh, Josiah Musili was my boss. He oh! <laughs> It's yeah. good to know. Josiah, thanks a lot for checking us up. And if you're watching us, I can see so many of you watching. Please let us know where you're watching us from. And if you have any question about consulting, immigration consulting, yes. Uh, feel free to throw it in. But can I ask this sentence? Yeah. But do you think our laws are a bit more linear? Because honestly, you've just mentioned Tanzania. Man, the thought of going there to start a business, I hear. First of all, you know, God rest his soul in peace, Magufuli. He has denied Kenyans being appointed by even international companies there. Now that we know, it's in the books at his time. I don't know, is it that they are more stringent? Uh, so that's why that's why my basic question was: Are we more? Yes, you said you said it's a president thinking. I mean, forward thinking. But also, is it that we are more flexible than our East African neighbors? Yes, we are because we are the leaders. Leaders lead. Leaders don't follow. <laughs> leaders, uh, you don't benchmark with, uh, with oh. the people that you consider that they are below yeah. you. Yeah. You, you look ahead. <laughs> Let's compare ourselves with Dubai. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Eighty percent. The GCC countries. You yeah. know the countries in that that how many Kenyans are there? 
the, the economy is run by expatriates. Mm-hmm. They know what matters to them. Yeah. And they are not bothered by the number of expatriates. Yeah. 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 Again, it's just an enforcement. Uh-huh. Kenya, Kenya is, is open for business. We yeah. should remain open for business uh-huh. because we are the leaders. Okay. We need to allow people to come. Yeah. And I need to clarify something. Please. Immigration law. Mm-hmm. Now speaking as a as a lawyer, yeah, is is you know you will find within the international law, immigration law is left to citizens, yes, to the countries to decide their own, the right mm-hmm. of admission. Yes, we can tell you know Americans, even the American president can arrive at the AKA, mm-hmm. and an immigration officer can say, Mr. President, you are not entering Kenya. <laughs> He won't do nothing. <laughs> you wow. get it? Wow, that's powerful. Yeah? Yeah. So so immigration, every country has to decide how they want to do the immigration. Yeah. So if, if Tanzania decides we want to be strict on our immigration for, mm. for whatever end, okay. they can do that. But I think Kenya's law, Kenyan law is, is the most recent. Okay. Flexible. Definitely. But strategic. New constitution and all that. But when the president says Africans can travel, yeah. he's being strategic. I don't have, I don't fault the president. Mm. In fact, I fault mm-hmm. uh, them, yeah. now maybe the, the foreign uh, policy team, yeah. foreign affairs, not being able to negotiate reciprocity. Okay. But in terms of clo- locking Kenya, we shouldn't. Yeah. Let people come. Okay. But, but useful people. We don't want criminals. All right. That's not it. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions, including those guys who we, we've had go to the, some of the Asian countries and we have, have bad stories coming back. Uh, I want to know about their lows. There. I don't know. I don't know. You will help us. But I just want to give a shout out before we also get into the challenges that you faced in your business. Yeah. Karika Boy, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, my brother Israel, Robert Burale, is watching. Burale, I know you want to go to Burale. Burale is not a country. <laughs> But anyway, uh, Nathan Teto, watching from Kitengela, Sati Sana. Yeah, so keep watching and uh, send in your comments or questions that you may have. So, let's talk about, because I, I know these, let's leave the challenges first. We talk about this situation I see. Yeah. Uh, because I want to believe immigration, foreign affairs, there's a, there's a connection somewhere there. Yeah. And we have seen, you know, this, especially house managers who go to those homes. Yeah. And then we have seen a lot of, I don't want to call them bogus because some yeah. people say they are somewhat genuine, mm. who are, are they agencies? I will call them agencies, yeah. you know, yeah. who help, you know, take this house managers to those countries and all those kind of things. Yeah. But the process of them coming back if they don't like what they're doing. In fact, somebody quoted them to slavery. There's a lot of conversation going around. We've seen some come back in coffins and all those kind of things. I know this is a loaded question, but I know George, because we're in immigration, I don't know if they have helped any of them, because of that. <laughs> what do you have to say about it? Um, I mean, it's a mix, it's, it's a crazy mix. Number one, yeah. any Kenyan is free to go anywhere to look for opportunities. Yeah. If someone comes and tells you, I'm going to Dubai to look for work, yeah. house help, uh-huh. as an immigration officer, you have no right to stop them. It's yeah. their right to travel. Their yeah. constitutional right, freedom, freedom of movement in and outside the country, Very true. number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, there is an issue of unemployment mm-hmm. in the country. Yeah. So you can't tell somebody who is sitting in the village in Taraka and, yes. and, and get to know that there is an opportunity in Dubai where they can make you know, an income uh-huh. not to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, thirdly, yeah. is the issue you raise, the yeah. issue of people being duped into these opportunities. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you're told this is what you're going to do when you go to Qatar. Yeah. In fact, some are told you're going to Dubai, but when yes. they get in the plane, they're going to Bahrain or some oh, other yeah, country. Yeah, some of them don't even know where they're going. They don't know where they're going. Yeah. And then yeah. The, the, the enforcement. Mm-hmm. The enforcement. And I think now the ministry yeah. is coming up with guidelines on the recruitment agencies yeah. and the streamlining mm-hmm. so that you have all the information you need. Yeah. And then the issue of the Kenyan government and the the host government yeah. having a memorandum on enforcement and the right because if you look at the things that people complain about yeah. is violation of basic rights, human mm-hmm. rights. It, mm-hmm. It's not about who the person and where they are. Very true. But there is something also people need to know. You uh-huh. need to understand the immigration laws of the countries you're going into. Okay. Some of those laws yeah. is if you are coming in mm-hmm under the sponsorship of your employer, mm-hmm. then you are bound for two years to remain with that employer. Wow. And you cannot change an employer while you are in country. So that's what happens. That's why you hear That's what happens. Yeah. You can't leave because 
you can only live going back to your country. Yes. And these people, mm -hmm. they have some arrangement with these agencies yes. that keep these people in bondage, mm -hmm. which is, should be examined because that should not be happening. I should, should be, be free to, Very true. To, to get employed and, f and free to exit employment Absolutely. as and when I wish. Yeah. And then, of course, the burden is also on these countries. Mm -hmm. To enforce the law, to yes. make sure that people's rights are, are respected. Yeah. When you're in Kenya, uh -huh. it doesn't matter how you came here. Even if you're a refugee, yeah. the owners on the on the protection of your rights is on the government of Kenya. Is the host country. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and then again, a lot of these people, when they go into those countries, they disappear. They don't mm -hmm. register with the embassies. Yeah. So even the embassies, the consulate in these countries, do not know where you are. Mm -hmm. You raise a distress call. They have no understanding where you are. Yeah. And again, I also want to say this, and I know it's very controversial. Yeah. Countries are not at the same level in terms of respect for human rights. <laughs> you will not hear this kind of complaints from Europe You're right. or from the Americans. You're right. You will, you're likely to hear them from African countries, some Asian countries. Because yeah. um, and let's face it, if you're hiring somebody mm -hmm. to help you with the house management, yeah. Is an important person. Very important. Treat them as part of your household. You're right. You wouldn't be hearing these stories. Mm -hmm. But something also, mm -hmm. some of these people also go there. Yeah. And they're also problematic. So we need to look at the complete, <laughs> the completeness. So I have a question though, yeah. because I, I know what you're saying and I agree with you. I mean, it's a complete whole sphere that we need to look at. Yeah. But uh, of course, the underlying thing, as you've said, these are human beings and they need to be treated as human beings. Yeah. But those rogue, we have some rogue, cons those agencies, agencies, let me use the word agencies, yeah. you know? Yeah. You can trace them immediately, take their people, you can't trace them. You know, you will hear this in the news, people, we tried calling these agencies, their numbers even no longer in use. What's happening? Is it that the government has not cracked down on them? What needs to happen? I think it's, um, it's again a mix of several yeah. things. Yeah. Poor regulatory framework. Yeah. Of course, the usual suspect corruption. Yeah, and and you will be surprised. This is a business. Yeah, for the big shot as well. Oh, you some know, hands are there. You know, moving people across, whether it's human trafficking, whether it's mm. whatever it is. Yeah, it's all about big business. You're right. But the tragedy of it, it's about human life and human rights. Yeah. In, in fact, what you said is true because now because of the saga that just happened, for a flight to just get out of this airspace. There's some serious clearance that happens. And so for it to happen, there's some big hand somewhere and then we are here complaining, oh goodness, if you're there and you're watching, may the Lord see you. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, let's just jump into, uh, you know, some other things about, um, you know, the challenges because now you're in business. Yeah. Uh, and definitely you have had your experience of just from starting and, you know, how it's going. I don't know what challenges you faced, but you know, just something just hit me though. There's a statement yesterday, I think it was the day before yesterday, I think yeah. it was yesterday. Uganda released after the saga that we had of our Deputy President. Well, there saga. My, yeah. well, there saga. I don't even know if that, okay, whatever story that was. Mm -hmm. And uh, in one of the statements I read that, you know, Kenyans are free to move here, do whatever they want to do because of our agreement with the East African, East African community. community. Yeah. Pretty now normal. that you're the consultant here on immigration, yes. I think there could be very many business people who would be asking, oh, does that mean I can just get on a bus or take a flight, go to Uganda and set up my business there? Uh, as long as I pay the small permits, just like we do here in this country. I don't know. Maybe mention that then we jump into challenges. No. Um Within the East African community, there's that aspect of the right of move, freedom of movement and the right of establishment, yeah. where people can move across. Mm -hmm. But it's no streamline. Even here in Kenya, if okay. you're Ugandan, okay. when you come in, we require you to show yourself to an immigration officer oh. with an ID or whatever document, mm -hmm. so that you are captured in the system. Like if you get a job in, you know, in Kenya and you're Ugandan, mm -hmm. you have to apply for the permit. Yeah. However, it is free of charge. Yes. So even in those countries, some of them have not uh, abolished fees. Yeah. You still have to meet the requirement of immigration. Yeah. It's it's good order because you can't just be exiting. Even in your own house, people need to knock. <laughs> who is coming? <laughs> yeah. Who is coming? Who is here? And and and. Yeah. And also there is time for them to leave. They can't yeah. be, you Very know, true. and they can't get into your bedroom. I agree. So so. so you, yeah, that doesn't mean, you know, if you go into a country, you're not going to immigration, you will be arrested. Yeah. They might escort you to the border. They may not charge you because there are 
agreement is even if you find an East African member mm -hmm. who the only crime is the immigration status has expired, you're supposed to facilitate them to regularize mm -hmm. or you allow them to go back home. Don't okay. take them to court. It's not in good spirit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But, but uh, some of the countries are very easy to set up businesses, yeah. like Rwanda. Six yeah. hours, you have a company, you have everything you need. It's yeah. an example of even we in Kenya are not there yet. <laughs> but our problem is uh, larger than that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. Yeah. We're not diving into that we for now. Yeah. But oh goodness, Lord, what you've said is true. The cost of starting a business here and uh, you know the process is another story we need yeah. to have. Yeah. Um, you know, I posed a question some time back. We were having an SME boot camp, and I posed a question. We had Kibs, we had Carrie in the house, we had uh, competition authority and all that. And I told them, all of you guys, you need licenses, right? So can we just uh, decide on this? I see, I'm starting a business now. I want to sell my OG. Can you tell me what money you need, what money you need and all that? And at the end of it, we're trying to do the computation. Goodness, mm. it's something else. But that's a conversation yeah. for another day. Let's get into the challenges. Yeah. Immigration and then COVID heat, by the way. You must have suffered big time. I'm already preempting <laughs> some of this thing. Yes. I don't know. People are not moving. Everybody was locked up in the house. I yeah. don't know whether we have recovered. Are you even making money? But you're here. <laughs> but how is it? No, I think I think there are many challenges. Of course, COVID was a challenge to everybody. So yes. it's generic. Yeah. So it's not unique to immigration field. Okay. But you can imagine when, for once, the world ground to halt. We locked down the the world. Yeah. Yeah. The, the planes were. Crown and no one was traveling. Yeah. So immigration was like, you shut down and go home. You will come back. And only with a few guys calling you because my visa has expired. I don't know yeah. what to do. Mm -hmm. They are stuck here and all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But the number one challenge uh, is also an opportunity. Uh -huh. The immigration field is not regulated like I did say. Yes. Anybody can enter, anybody can leave. Mm -hmm. What that means is there are no standards. There is no code of, of, yeah. of, of ethics. Yeah. So people do all manner of things. Mm -hmm. And of course you get a bad name. Mm -hmm. And the pricing and all those kind of things. Yeah. People promise people something. Yeah. They go con them and, you know, do a document. By the time people come to you, yes. they're already so messed up, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. That's number one. And then number two is people do not understand yeah. what immigration consulting is. Okay. People would walk to me and say, you know, oh, I need this. I need, and I listen to it and it's complicated. And I, and I say, mm -hmm. I'm going to charge you this. They're like, oh, but too expensive. I have somebody who can do it cheaply. Yeah. Um, but I have learned that you can't compete on pricing. Yeah. You know, Definitely. you don't compete on pricing, you compete on the value you're giving to people. You're right. And you have a good brand, people know you. Immigration is personal, just mm -hmm. like a doctor. Mm -hmm. Like you go to a lawyer yes. as well. Yeah. It's very personal. People come about citizenship. Mm -hmm. People come with challenges about they want to set up business. Yeah. You know, you get to help them. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the challenges. And then again, now what's happening is we are starting to see huge companies, global companies coming with a huge muscle and setting up here, okay. which is good because they create jobs. Yeah. For the last seven years, <laughs> I was a part of that. Well, still a challenge though. Yeah, I know. And you learn. Mm -hmm. So there's competition. But I will tell you, if out of 100, the only people that access immigration services through consultant are probably less than 30%. The field is very okay. big. Okay. And then... The other challenge which I see as a big opportunity for me, and I'll speak to it in terms of the future, is mm -hmm. there is no school, no yeah. university, yeah. not including the law schools mm -hmm. that are training on, on citizenship and immigration law. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So people, it's either you worked with immigration so you know about it, mm -hmm. or you worked with somebody who worked with immigration who trains you, mm -hmm. or you just jump into the market and think you can do something. Mm -hmm. So, so there is, the skills are lacking. Yeah, you find so many people out here calling themselves consultant, mm -hmm. and they, they they are very flamboyant, but they are very shallow yes. in terms of their content uh -huh. and and their capacity to deliver. Yeah, I was chatting with one of my bosses, former bosses at immigration, mm -hmm. one of my mentors, and yeah. we were, he was saying, we are very happy to see you guys now, yeah. that are former immigration officers coming into the field mm -hmm. to provide, you know, substance. Mm -hmm. Because now we know you're giving very solid advice based on your experience and practice. Very true. Over the years, uh, those are some of the things. Okay. Um, but it also gives me an opportunity, mm -hmm. because I, what I've, I've learned, and Plan from my teachers, mm -hmm. uh, like one of them is Professor Kamere Mbote, that mm -hmm. paths are made by walking. Yeah. Yeah. If you're somebody that wants to always ride on, on a tarmac road, you're following people. 
the following people. Yeah, but if you want to create a path, you have to walk into the forest. <laughs> and you, you, you walk and end. Yeah. And then again, a uh, quote uh, associated with Peter Drucker and uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. That you can predict your future. Wow. The only way is to create it. You have to create your future. If you want to predict your future, mm -hmm. you really have to create it. That's the surest way. Yeah. But you sit there and expect a miracle will fall, it won't create your future. Right. And for me, uh -huh. the future mm -hmm. of immigration is in our younger people, yes. young associates, people coming from law school and people that want to practice. Yes. And yes. I am into mentorship. Wow. Yes, wow. to make sure that we, we are not a story of a tree, I don't know what to pronounce, but I used to say baobab. Yes. But my daughter says it's baobab. from the truth, go ahead. My, my daughter <laughs> says it's baobab. Yes. But in my mother tongue, uh, it's called muramba. It's very, it could go even into this room, wow. it could 20 people around it. Wow. It, it grows in the desert. Yes. In, in dry places. It's uh -huh. very, very in the, you know, the vertical, but over time, because it's standing alone, yeah. the element, the weather, the wind, everything, mm -hmm. eventually falls. Wow. Now compare that with, you know, very slender trees in a forest, rainforest, yeah. mm -hmm. standing very tall, but for ages, because mm -hmm. there are very many, you can't break them. Very true. So if you want, you know, a good immigration practice, let us grow people. Yes. Let us not try to, to shrink mm -hmm. and to stop people from, I, I, people call me all the time, young people, we would like to. Yeah. Learn. I'm like, please come. Okay. But I realize uh, there is only so much I can do alone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Now, before we get into the questions, yeah. um, I want you to comment on um, marriage. Why? Because I know you, I have heard you speak about it sometimes in yeah. videos. There are people who decide I'm going to be a citizen immediately, and they just get uh, somebody, and then they get married, and boom. I don't know. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to be, throw in a comment. I don't even know how to phrase the question. I. I yeah. But please go ahead. Sorry. I think there are a few things people need to understand. Yeah. Because people are trying to look for residence and citizenship in Kenya mm -hmm. through marriage and other ways. Yeah. You can become a Kenyan in mm -hmm. several ways, mm -hmm. but broadly it's two ways. Yeah. You are born a Kenyan. Yeah. Definitely. Or you can register as a Kenyan. Yeah. But now under registration there are several categories. Mm -hmm. You can be in Kenya on a permit for at least seven years. Yeah. You would qualify to apply. Uh -huh. Qualifying and getting are two different things. Okay. Because the right of admission is unto the government of Kenya. Yes. On marriage, yeah. you can if you have been married to a Kenyan for at least seven years. Oh, at least seven years. Eh? Not for the purposes of getting Kenyan citizenship, <laughs> because you have to swear even affidavit to, to that effect. Wow. After seven years, when you strike seven years, mm -hmm. and you remain married to that one Kenyan, yes, you can apply to become Kenyan citizen through marriage. Oh. But if you marry Nyambura, mm -hmm. divorce Nyambura mm -hmm. at year three, yes, then you go to to Kamene in Saraka, yes, in year four, <laughs> you have to go back. Yeah, so you, cycle you can't just marry a Kenyan, okay, and become. But there is also an issue. If you allow me to comment. There is an yes. issue that I think is a is a. Is, is closer to discrimination. Yeah. There are people that are married to us. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you know, in African culture, when you marry into a home, even if we used to fight, you become family. Yeah, that's true. So these are the people that I have a, I have a really a feeling for. Because yeah. when you get married to a Kenyan, mm -hmm. you don't get the right to work in Kenya mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah. You still have to get a work permit. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I know people who are still looking for a work, maybe they have been denied for long. Yeah, so, so I think that's an area that we need to reconsider yeah. and introduce a category of a visa because Kenyans getting married into other countries, yeah. they almost immediately get a spouse of visa mm -hmm. that allows them to work. Yeah. Imagine we have a Kenyan mm -hmm. who, who has married to a foreign doctor. So mm -hmm. the person sits in the house because they don't want to give them a permit mm -hmm. and they think, Paying for 200,000 every year mm -hmm. for a permit is too expensive. Mm. Somebody who could be helping us treat people. Yeah. But because of that immigration misnomer, yeah. it's the law, but we need to change it. That's I think true. we need to change the law. Yeah. Because the right to family is a constitutional right. Absolutely. And you are free to marry from wherever. Okay. And you can reside wherever. Okay. So, so we need to think about that. Okay. We need yes. to reconsider. <laughs> Finally, comment on uh, the green card. The U.S. Somebody said this green card thing, they hate it's back. So <laughs> I, I think the green card, the U.S. green card system, which yeah. used to be a lottery system, is yeah. 
I think it was the U.S. government system where they they wanted to tapped into some talent from around the globe mm -hmm. uh, you know to build the economy yeah. so you once you're on a green card mm -hmm. you can find your way into the u.s yeah the green card is the right of residency and and work yeah. so you, but when you are there you have to look for a job yeah uh, no one will give you a job because you've landed in mm -hmm. the u.s mm -hmm. yeah so i think he's there yeah. yeah it has never you know it has never bothered me so much because i have never been interested yeah. but i know kenyans are very interested yeah we all, people, Oh, people, a lot of the people, let me not see all people, because yeah. I am not there. <laughs> people want to go to the U.S., Yeah. but I always want to go to the U.S. on my terms, on your to terms. visit, to study. Very true. But everybody is free, mm -hmm. you know, but, but I think that is there. Yeah. Uh, it's not easy now, especially with the new immigration reforms, Yeah. but it's still an opportunity for Kenyans that want to go to the U.S. Okay. Yeah. Okay, lovely. Mm -hmm. So, just one more thing here. Yeah. Let's get to the questions. I'm jumping in already. First yeah. of all, Andrian, thanks a lot. That's my buddy. He's watching. He's talking about, is this an opportunity about, uh, he's talking about student visa yeah. and marketing our country as an education hub to foreigners. Yeah. What's your comment on that? I think he just threw in that. Yes, I think, I think again, like I said, we are leaders. Yeah. Look at, we are top, top universities. Yeah. Look at even the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, the private universities. Try them. I think is the leading business school yeah. in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. We need to market Kenya as a place you can come and study, but we need to streamline because you don't. Because I get my friends that have been here for a while. Yeah. And they are struggling with even getting their student visa. Yeah. But I think Kenya is good. Wow. For that. Lovely. Nemo is watching. Yeah, Nemo. She likes my shirt. <laughs> even George likes it. And so I will be disclosing where it came from. <laughs> Just in a moment, just in a moment. And, um, you know, I think it's important just say this is courtesy of Sport on Aprils. Uh, you can just check out their Facebook page, Sport on Aprils. They, they have good. dressed me up, you know. Yeah, so uh, thanks a lot for that, for those who are asking about where they can get this thing up. So, George, you know, let me, I'm just going through some of the questions that I have seen. Uh, so what do you tell Antonio? He was interested in going to Canada. Um, he needs to see you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can give him some some guidelines on yeah. on what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm not an expert on Canadian immigration. But I can I know somebody. You can guide him. I have definitely. I know agents, good people that can help with that process. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But Canada looks now very yeah attractive to very many people because US became a bit tougher. Absolutely. So people and you know their neighbors. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think what happens in Canada? Yeah. Because they are provinces. Mm -hmm. So they have. The level of the hardship of getting a visa is dependent on the, the provinces you're going to. There are some provinces within Canada that need more people, yeah. depending on their, their economic activity. Yeah. So you'll find it's a bit more, it's not a one kind of holistic approach. Mm -hmm. If you want to go to Quebec or some other, yeah. you'll find they have an extra layer of requirement. Yeah. So it depends on that. But we can certainly guide them. Okay. Yeah. So definitely there are some basic questions that people send up here. Yeah. Let me see this one. Um, how does one choose an immigration consultant? The same way you choose a doctor. It's up to you. <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah, it's right? really a personal choice. That's a good one. Uh, let me see another question here. Uh, uh, what's your competition? I think you've addressed the element of competition with challenges. No, we, I don't think there is competition. Yeah. It's everybody doing their thing. Yeah. You know, you know, people tend to be scared of competition. Yeah. Why do you want to be alone anyway? Yeah. You know, let's. Let the market forces dictate. Uh -huh. And people know, you know, this is a very personalized uh, service. Yeah. Everybody has, like in the forest, there mm -hmm. is space for everybody. Mm -hmm. There is space for the big companies. Mm -hmm. There is space for my friends that are outside their house. Mm -hmm. There is space for everybody. Absolutely. So, top skills, now that you're in business and it's a business show, what would you say are the top three or top two career skills? you know, that is needed for you to be a successful entrepreneur? Well, number one is integrity. Integrity, definitely. If you lack integrity, it doesn't matter how talented you are. Yeah. People will come to you because you are this big brand, but they know you are fraud. Very true. Yeah? Very true. And, and like, the industry we are in is about compliance. It's about document. Yeah. I know people want to give you this example on site. Mm -hmm. Somebody walked into my office and, and gave me a story, a scenario. Yeah. But it's, it's a successive wrong advisory. Mm -hmm. But the net effect is the person is stateless in the street of Nairobi. Mm. They return their former 
passport. Yeah. They have not acquired Kenyan pa passport, and they need the Ken their former passport to acquire the Kenyan citizenship. Oh my! So they are stuck in the street of Nairobi because of the wrong advice given. So integrity is number one. Very true. Number two. Yeah. Focus. Focus. You must remain focused. Wow. There will be a lot of wind. Mm -hmm. So you must focus. If you have to readjust yourselves, you just have to do that. Yeah. And I think number three. Yeah. Respect people. Respect your client. They are not money-making machines. Yeah. People don't come to you because they feel very wealthy. <laughs> they are coming to you because they have a need. So that now if, I, if President Uhur walks into my office yeah. to seek a service, I'm like, you, Mr. President, before even I open my mouth, put a million there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. The person before you is, does not come with their titles. You have a service. If the service you you're offering is ten thousand, mm -hmm. whether it's who, whether it's minor, mm -hmm. charge them the same. Yeah. You know, don't look at people, yeah. and people know when you're trying to, to you know, to exploit them. Yeah. Because they want to do, um, you deliver. People call me and say, "Oh, do yeah. you help with this?" I say, "Yes, I do." They say, "How much?" I'm like, "No, I'm not selling a goat or yeah. a cow." Mm -hmm. I'm offering you a service. So you need to understand the spectrum of what I will do for you Absolutely. before we agree on the price. That's true. Yeah, so those are three. Yeah. Number one is integrity, focus, and then respect the people that you serve. All right. Shout out to Mike Moneni is watching from Josica Town. I don't know where that one is, but you will tell me where Josica is. So we, oh goodness, time is up. Uh, so I think uh, people, where do they get you? That's another question people are asking. If I want to get uh, George's. Uh, I'm online. I'm, I'm online all the time. Online all the time. <laughs> this is a business that I, I mean, like eighty percent of your clients, you don't even get to meet them. They write yeah. emails to you yeah. from all, across the world. Yeah. And, um, and 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 you know you serve them because they already see your brand. Yeah. But I I was squatting in a small office around Madonna House <laughs> on the second floor in Westland. Madonna House is in Westlands. Yeah. Just up here. Yeah, just mm -hmm. up here. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, I'm there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a squatter at the moment, but uh, <laughs> but the business is online a lot of the time. Oh yeah. Yeah, but uh, I mean, but it's the norm of the day now. It's the norm of the day. Uh, uh, but online. but uh, yeah. Okay. So and and the kind of business we are in is not the mass market. Okay. It's very personalized. When you have you pers giving personalized service. Mm -hmm. Just like a handmade car, yes, tends to be very pricey, yeah, but also very well done because it's not for mass production. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna ask you this question about uh, you know, uh, actually it's not a question; it's actually your parting shot. Uh, you know, to anyone who's watching, thinking through this, thinking through, uh, I want to do this kind of thing or all that. Uh, you know, I, I want to fly out. I want to start a business. I don't know where. What would be your party shot? I know that those are loaded things, but what yeah. would be your party shot on this conversation? I think number one, just be clear. Yeah. On the on the legal regime of the country you want to go to, mm -hmm. and by all means get quality advice from somebody that knows. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be judged, but get proper advice. Yeah. Some of it may not be what you're expecting, but if it's good advice, take it mm -hmm. because failure to do that yeah. will be problematic. You you don't want to be stuck in a foreign country yeah and i can tell you those those who have traveled immigration officers wherever in the world are tough guys yeah i went to the u.s you know the kenyans won't smile a lot mm -hmm. they will tell you welcome where have you been they're going to engage you yeah in the u.s they're like stand there mm -hmm. put your ping your fingers here yeah and watch this camera mm -hmm. yeah and then they're like what are you coming here to do <laughs> so yeah. so make sure that you're very clear on very uh, on the on the legal regime mm -hmm. so that you're not stuck and you start blaming uh, other countries yeah. for for harassing you you're right yeah. you're right wow yeah. many thanks for that but generally i think mm -hmm. um the future of the industry is in our young people. Yeah, and I'm I'm setting up an immigration acad academy because I realize we we need to train our people. There are no schools. Yeah, so we need to do that. And I'm also on the verge of uh, creating a network of immigration professionals. Yeah, you will be part of that, you know. Definitely. <laughs> in all the 54 countries in Africa. Wow. Yeah, and in the next ne next five to ten years, I want personally to go in all the 54 countries in Africa. Good. Because That's we need African solution to our immigration. Wow. Yeah, because be if you look at the agenda 2063, we are looking at, we're talking about one Africa. Yeah. But how can we be one Africa when, if you have to travel in 10 African countries, you need 10 visas? 
Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But we are seeing progress. Is I have seen they the FTCA, whatever these agreements are. Coming yeah, but out. the issue is we love them. The the right the the, the right of a, you know movement and establishment globally that protocol was I think in 1980 something mm -hmm. and has only been signed by less than 10 countries. <laughs> So we talk. We, we need talk to clear the talking shop people, okay? and, and do the, the actual uh, working. Wow. Thank you so much, George. You know, uh, and thanks a lot for our viewers and all those people who sent in your comments and questions, wherever you're watching us from. Tunashukuru sana. Thanks a lot for being part of this conversation. And, you know, I just wanted to, by the way, what has been your most satisfying moment in this business? I know I, I know you give the partition, but I just uh, that. there are many, not one, yeah. very many of them. There are many. Yeah. Choose one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think one is when I was in government. I think my orientation is more towards public service. I am not really a business person. Okay. Per excellence, it's yes. an issue of a, uh, you know, just being out here. Yeah. But when I was in government, mm -hmm. people come to your office. Mm -hmm. They 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 have a very urgent situation. Yeah. And they need maybe a document, a passport. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And I was the head of the VIP passport. Uh -huh. So I was serving the president and all these people. Yeah. But I had this instruction that was given to my team. Uh -huh. Any Kenyan mm -hmm. that find themselves here, whether they are lost or otherwise, mm -hmm. that day, yeah. they will be a VIP in their country. Wow. So, so, so these people would come and they would ask, is this the passport office? I'm like, no, but come in. Mm. I don't know them. Yeah. They're not asking anything, but you resolve their problem. They get a passport. They have a medical situation. They have to rush yeah. for a scholarship. Yeah. You know, there are very many kids that are losing on that because of now the queuing system, even in the in the passport system, mm -hmm. and they do not know who to go to. Yeah. When I help those kind of people, wow. and I actually don't know them, but yeah. I've been referred to by my now another person, yeah. and I speak to somebody, we speak to somebody, and we have the passport, and the yeah. person flies so for, go for medical. Mm -hmm. Those are my... Thank you, Moment. definitely, yeah. because it's definitely solving a problem that exists. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much once again. I just wanted to end this conversation with a thought, and uh, this is purely to the leaders that are being seen. First of all, I want to appreciate the fact that the business conversation is ongoing big time. We have seen conversations even by the political elite in this country who are now talking about matters by Kenya, build Kenya, lovely conversations. We are very proud of that. We have also seen elements of empowering the manufacturing sector, going the SME where I've had the bottom-up uh, conversations and all those kind of things. And we appreciate those kind of conversations. And here at Bistock, we're saying good stuff. However, if you listen to every conversation here, even from George who was here as well as a business person, there are always those challenges that are there facing businesses. And we really hope this is not just conversations for the sake of getting votes. We really hope you can get on the ground, listen to the business people, and implement those policies. And if you're still having the power to do that, show us practically what you're doing. And very soon we'll be hosting you here as well, so you can tell business people what you're about to do for them. So thank you so much to, you know, just this direction we are taking that, and this is the conversation we need to have because 80% of this economy is moved by SMEs. And we are very serious about ensuring that they have a good environment for doing business because for example why is it that when you're just starting a business you can't even take take i mean get a tax break or a tax holiday for you to just start why is the cost of business as just has said quite a little bit cumbersome here in this country well some in some of our east african countries is crazy those are the kind of conversation we need to hear from you because as you say the unemployed gap is quite big and we're talking of them going to business and then enable them to do that Thanks so much for tuning in right here on Biz Talks. We appreciate your time. Keep working as usual. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mina. I hope that...